Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute cards using a foil quill pen. I'll have the pen linked for you down below. This is what the kit looked like that I got. When you do purchase a kit, you get all the adapters that you'll need depending on which machine you're using, even a Cricut machine. For the um, Silhouette 3, you use the letter A adapter and uh, for my portrait three, I use this D adapter. As you can see, I already have one plugged in to the auxiliary power supply that I have. You can get these cheaply. You don't have to get an Apple one. Or you can plug it into, um, you see, it's just one of these plugs like for your phone. You can plug that into something that your phone would go into. So anyway, I'm just letting that heat up over there to get ready. These are the other ones. There's a, a thick blade or a thick pen, a medium size, and I'm using the most narrow or the skinniest one. You also, it's good if you have some of this stuff here that's um, <laughs> washi tape, okay? It works really, really well to not mess up your project. As you can see inside, I've even done this with the foil quill. And inside here, I did this one with the foil, with the foil quill also. Okay, so that's how that looks. Um, and then you also will need the quill, the foil. You'll get three, I think it is, colors of foil with the kit. I purchased this extra because I was going to make a bunch of Christmas cards and I wanted white snow. Okay, so let's look up on my screen and I'll show you how I got started. Okay, if you look up on my screen, you can see that there are animal coloring pages up there. It's $15 for this set if you don't have the Creative Fabrica subscription. And I highly recommend you get it today because today through maybe uh, June, maybe 13th of 2021, you can get a month's worth of Creative Fabrica for only a dollar, a little less than a dollar actually. And you can cancel it at any time, but you'd be able to get this then just for a dollar, along with all the other things that you can get as well. So um, I'm gonna download this. You just click on download and it'll come down here in the lower left-hand corner. Then I'll have to extract it. So once I've extracted all the files, then I can open them in Silhouette. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make it so it's exactly like mine is. I have this black inner piece, and then I've mounted that on this blue piece, and then on a white card base. So I'm going to show you how big to make the black piece right now. Okay, rather than reinvent the wheel, I'll just show you what I did. Right here, I have this open if we go to my page setup to portrait, because that's the machine I'm using. I have the cutting mat on portrait, and I have my media size as custom because I wanted to make the width six inches and the height or the length 11 inches. And that's because my foil is six inches wide and I wanna put it up in the upper left-hand corner of my mat. So I'll be sure when I put these things on there, they'll be in the perfect place. Okay, so what I did first was, if you'll, let's ungroup this. The very first thing I did was I drew a box, and this is for the black piece. So I'm going to draw a box, make it any size you want, and then I'm going to resize it. Now notice the one I've made was 5 inches tall by 3.75 inches wide. So I'm going to make this, this 3.75 inches wide, and this will be perfect for my A2 size card and then the height is going to be five inches. And that's exactly what I want. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my owl right here. So I'll go to File and Merge, and they're the adult or the animals, and I'll bring in the SVG, and again, I'll bring in the owl. Okay, it comes in pretty big like this, so I'm going to skinny it way down right off the bat. Like, whoopsie, but look, everything was a not connected. So let's go back, undo that, move this blue piece out of the way. going to grab everything like this, right-click and group. And then I can skinny him down so he'll fit on this page. So he could fit just like that, actually. 
And that would be quite cute if I just made him that size. So that's what I did for him. Then what I did was I grabbed both of these things and came up here and centered it like that. Okay. And the next thing I did was I made my um, sentiment. So I just got a little square and drew that out. And I'm honestly, I'm going to make it the exact same size as this one. So this one's three and a quarter. Whoopsie. Let me group this together. Let's group this back. And let me make sure this one's grouped. Okay, it is. So this is three and a quarter. So make this 3.25 wide. So 3.25 and hit enter. And I made it a half an inch tall or 0.5. So I'm going to make this 0.5 and hit enter. Okay, the font that I happen to use, I'll have a link for you down below because it's a nice font that does writing. And I'm going to first type in happy birthday. Whoops, got to come way over here to the font tool. So again, I have the text tool. Click here and I'm going to say happy birthday, all in caps. Okay going to click off of it, then click back on, and I'm going to get that font that I told you about. I'll have the link for it for you down below. I got it from Silhouette Studio, or the Silhouette uh, Store. You can get it from there to use for your Cricut machine as well. But the one that I like to use is called Stick Sketch Font. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just skinny that down now, so it'll fit on that box. In that box. Still too big. And once I have it pretty good, I can use my arrow key to manipulate it a little bit if I'd like. Okay, that's perfect like that. And I'll group these two things together. Whoops, I didn't mean to move my owl without grouping him first. Group. So what I really kind of like to do too is imagine this is the part front of my card. And I'm going to put this on here. And will that look good? Yeah, that's a really nice size, I think. Okay. So the other thing that I did was hope your day is a hoot. So again, I made a rectangle. Hmm. I think I made, meant to make the rectangle two inches by three inches. So I'm going to make it three inches wide and hit enter and two inches tall and hit enter. All right. And then I'll say hope your day is a hoot. And this is the text or the sentiment that's going to go inside. So again, my caps lock is on. Hope your, hit enter to go on the next line, day is a, hit enter, hoot, exclamation mark. Okay, notice that they're not lined up the way I'd like them to be, so I can come over here, and this one right here says justify center. It's going to make everything centered like that. Click off and click back on, and get that same font that I just used. Here are frequently used fonts. And if I scroll up here, here are recently used. Well, frequently used and recently used both have that stick sketch font, and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to make it smaller by grabbing this box on the right and just skinnying it down until I feel that it fits on there nicely. And if I want to, I could grab both of these things and uh, center them like that to make sure they're centered or do it by eye and then just group all of these together. All right, one more thing I forgot to tell you is this. For some reason, my things are coming in without a red border for a cut, cut line. So what I need to do is ungroup this, just select the box, and make sure that this line up here, the line color is red. And then I can group it back together. Do the same thing with this. I'm going to ungroup this. The only thing I want to have red is the box around it the cut line red and I'll show you how important that is in a minute if I was to leave them just like this I'll show you what's going to happen I'll say send usually we come in and it says simple when we first get in here but I don't want it to be simple because I need to be able to have these not cut like that like cut lines so if I go by line color now I can change this so that I can cut when only the red is selected. And notice I have that on cut over here. When I deselect that, I can also come here and do the um, 
sketching. Notice right now the black around this box. Remember I said I wanted it to be red because I want it to be a cut line. Just like if we look at this, these are cut lines around these boxes. So let me show you. I'm going to go back to design. I'm going to change this and ungroup it. And with just the outer box selected, I'm going to come up here and change the outline of it to red. And then I'm going to group it all together again. And now when we come over here and I say send, you can see that there's a cut line around this one, this one, and this one. But, but right now also, if I uncheck that and come back here, notice it's going to sketch this text and this text. I'm not sure why that happens, but I'll show you the fix if this happens to you as well. Go back to design, and I'm going to ungroup this again because all I want is the owl. Now, I'm going to make the weight or the point size zero, and I'm going to change the line color again to black. Okay, it makes it look really dark like that. And then just grab everything and group it again. I'm not sure why that does that, if that has to do with the way the person designed these uh, pictures or what, but that's all you have to do. So if you're not sure and you can't remember, you know, make a little note to yourself of what you need to do to your owl. So I'll go to send now, and now you'll notice that when it comes in, everything that's black or that's going to be sketched is black. Okay, that looks horrible, right? But you saw how beautifully that turned out when I did it, so not to worry. After you're done sketching all of this with your pen, with your marker, you'll uncheck that and make sure this says cut and check that and change anything that you need to on your cut. Right now my machine's turned off so it doesn't look exactly right. But now I'm going to take you and I'll show you my actually in kind of a fast speed getting this ready to go. Okay, here's my foil. I'm just going to cut it with my X-Acto knife. Like that. And I'll take this foil, shiny side up, and I'm going to put it in the upper left-hand corner. Remember, that's how we figure this out. And I'm going to use the really straight edge here and here. Okay, then I'll take my washi tape and hopefully get some nice pieces. Uh, I also sometimes use the really skinny washi tape, which I have. You don't want to be cheap with your washi tape, though, because it's going to make a difference in your finished product. So I'm going to tape that. Try not to get wrinkles in your paper. Let's see, I'll turn on my machine. I would heat up my um, stylus or my quill for about five minutes before I'd start. I put this into my machine. And if my machine were turned on, I would simply come over here and unclick this because I like to do the black first, the sketching first, before you cut. Always sketch first and then cut. So then I would say send and I'll show you how that goes.